Hey everyone, welcome back to Pete Punch Beef Gaming. All right, it's time for a combined week five, week six recap of my Age of Sigmar Path to Glory games that I've been playing, where I've been featuring the Stormcast Eternals. <music> So I have been able to get a game in uh, this last week. Uh, only one game due to family commitments and some weather, but I still was able to get a game in. And it was against the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, that opponent I played a few weeks back. Great gentleman. He got a chance to do a little bit of a rematch with me. Uh, we played 1,500 points again, and he had, I think, about 30 more tech guard, if I'm not mistaken. He had uh, five Cavalos Death Riders. He had a Liege Cavalos. Uh, he also had a Gothazar Harvester and Archon the Black. Uh, that more or less made up his 1,500 points to include uh, some endless spells, and he had the OBR train piece to go along with him. Uh, I, on the other hand, uh, played with um, three units of Vindictors, uh, Vandis Hammerhand. I played with my Lord Imperident, Knight Arcanum. Uh, I also played with um, my uh, Annihilators with the, the Grand Hammers, and... I think that was pretty close to what I had. I think I had an endless spell. Oh, and then of course my uh, Storm Drake Guard. They were they were also a part of part of the army. So we played for the mission. We played power in numbers. Uh, it was uh, you had three objectives uh, on each side, kind of just on the right on the outskirts of the deployment zone. And it was one where the longer you hold the objective, the more points, the victory points you earn. And then, of course, you could also burn the objectives. He castled up pretty aggressively on the on my far left side in his deployment zone, so his right side. He had his Mortec Guard. I think there was 30 of them. And then, of course, the Gothazar Harvester back there. So that made a pretty tough nut to crack and then immediately to the other side he put in their Archon the Black and then he put out his Leech Cavalos and the Death Riders on the other side of his terrain piece. So I'm not wanting to get anywhere near that Mortec Guard just because it would just be a quagmire of models to try and get through. I, I kept my Storm uh, Drake Guard on that side to kind of counter them and then I put everything on the other side except for I kept two units of Vindictors and my Annihilators in reserve, and then I kept my Arcanum, uh, my Lord Imperitant, and then Bandis, uh, along with my unit of uh, Vindictors to move up my right side or his left flank to engage the um, the Cavalos Death Riders and uh, his Liege Cavalos. So he got, uh, he was the first player to go in turn one. Uh, he shuffled some things around to make sure that he controlled his, his um, uh, controlled his objectives and then uh, tried to spread out a little bit to prevent me from uh, teleporting in. Uh, I moved my units up. I kept the Storm Drake back a little bit to hold my objective. I moved my Nar Night Arcanum over to hold uh, my middle objective. And then I kept... Uh, my other three units within six inches of my far right objective. I moved up, um, or I teleported in my Annihilators and two units of Vindictors. The Annihilators made the charge as well as, I think, a unit of Vindictors. And here's where I totally goofed up. Uh, I split my attacks against the Leech Cavalos and the, uh, and the Death Riders, and then my other Vindictors charged the the. Death Riders as well. I wasn't able to kill either units. And then he also got the first turn at the top of two, and he was able to heal quite a bit back. Uh, he healed up his Caval or his, yeah, his Leech Cavalos um, uh, to full. He was almost dead. I think he was on three wounds, something like that. Brought him back to full. And then his uh, Death Riders, he was able to bring back one or two extra models. So he's sitting on a nearly full unit. And um, by that point, I was able to get in the rest of my Vindictors and get some shooting off uh, with both my Drakes and uh, my my Lord Imperitant. And I was able to do some more damage. I dropped his horses. The Liege Cavalos uh, also took a few more wounds, didn't die. And he had also brought over Archon the Black, which... 
uh, was a really interesting move. He's pretty frightening in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, maybe not as terrifying as some of the other destruction heroes are, but but certainly wiped out my annihilators that you know smeared them off the board. Um, and then I got the to go first turn. I uh, I double turned him on the top of three, and at which point he conceded because I was able to uh, threaten his two main characters on the outside, and then theoretically run away with the victory points because I was contesting one of his objectives and then, uh, or actually not con contesting, I actually had taken that one away. The one in the middle, uh, I theoretically could have moved my Storm Drakes in and maybe done some work on that or the one on uh, his far right or my far left. Um, either way, it was, a, it was a great game and I want to thank him again, Vandy, for, uh, for the game. I really appreciate it. I know you're working on your setup and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to deploy. Uh, we're both learning our new armies and so it was a ton of fun and I really want to thank him for that. It ended with a major victory for me. Uh, I got a total of 20 glory points out of the deal. And with it, I got uh, I upgraded my stronghold to an imposing stronghold. Uh, I had one re-roll. I had to pay a point for a re-roll for my annihilators. And then I got the Wildlands uh, territory, which was great because now I can add more uh, monsters to my army. Uh, although I don't know if and when that will come into play, but... Certainly, I, there, Stormcast have some really fun monsters to, to add, and so that would be neat to do. Uh, all said and done, I spent a total of 21 points, which has zeroed me out on my, uh, on my glory points. So no moss. I don't have any more, so I need another game to, to make it happen. Uh, I did get um, my favorite warriors were the Annihilators, they, and they got six extra points. And then um, my Annihilators leveled up, they got Devastating Charge, and then one of my Vindictors also got Fleet of Foot. Uh, my quest log, Defend Your Realm, I really like that one because of the extra glory points. I highly recommend it if you're trying to get your Path to Glory army moving in terms of what you can buy and what you can do. Uh, unfortunately, I only got a single uh, uh, a single point in that one just due to the fact that uh, by the time the game ended in turn three, only had one unit in his territory. So. I didn't get anything there, but that's okay. Now, in terms of painting, I got uh, another unit of Vindictors done, my five-man unit, which I should have up on the screen here momentarily. Uh, certainly, I would say the unit went by faster this time around, and I did a couple little tiny detail marks in there, just so if I want to break them apart, I could tell, you know, which five-man unit goes to which five-man unit, but not, not big enough so that uh, if I wanted to combine them into one large unit, uh, I couldn't go that route. So I, I was definitely happy to do that. I didn't get as much in my AOS stuff painted because I was really focusing on getting Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff knocked out. I had a... Uh, three box tournament just yesterday which was a ton of fun and I'll do some Marvel Crisis Protocol content before too long uh, but I but I definitely enjoyed that and then this week I am working on my uh, Praetorians and so I want to have these guys done by Wednesday it's a three-man unit it's kind of the guard unit uh, they actually have the most uh, renowned points of any of my units outside of my Lord and Parent um, because um, they just got a lot of play being that they're in the core box. Uh, you know, would I take them in an army normally? Mm, I don't know. They hit reasonably hard. They've got a, a great armor at 3 plus. Uh, you can get them down at 2 plus with all out defense, uh, and they can absorb wounds from the hero that they're guarding. But. But I don't know. I you know they come in. They're they're reasonably expensive at 165 points. They're not out of control. But I'm I'm not sure if I'd go that route in the future. Maybe maybe not. We'll see. So I'm pretty excited because uh, week six is week six is coming up here, and that will be the conclusion of our uh, brand new first Path to Glory 2022 series that we're doing. And we're going to do a Paint to Glory on Wednesday. So what does a Paint to Glory mean? Well, I, I've mentioned it in the past. It's where everybody brings the models that they've finished, uh, painting, building, whatever the case may be, to uh, to the shop. And we just kind of display what we've gotten done. And I would really like to have the Praetorians done because I think that would be the entirety of what I set out with with the Dominion box because I got um, my Lord and Parent finished, I got my Knight Arcanum finished, I got two units of Vindictors finished, I also got my 
uh, Annihilators with the shields done. I also got Annihilators finished with the, uh, with the Storm hammer, Hammers. And I would like to have these Praetorians done as well, if at all possible. So that, that will be what I'd like to display there. And I, I think that that is pretty close to a thousand points. I'll definitely do some content on that and show everybody what I've gotten done here over the course of the, the six week, um, uh, the six week path to glory that we've done here. What I would um, be interested in talking about in the future, especially as we do kind of a wrap up video on this whole deal, uh, is, hey, for the next path to glory, which army should I play? So I've got a couple of choices. Uh, of course, I could do my storm cast and do something a little bit different uh, and, and try and round them out. I, I think that would be that would be fun. I also have the beginnings of um, my Sons of Bahamut army or Bahamut army. And uh, that might be kind of fun to put on there. Although I think that's a that is a real kind of punch the face at low point levels, I think, for newer players. I've got my KO army. Uh, and then I've got my Ogre Kingdoms army. Interesting thing about the Ogre Kingdoms is they're almost entirely painted. So if I did a Path to Glory, I'd want something I'm working on, although that's not a showstopper. The KO army, I'm, I'm a little bit torn on. I had fun with them and I like painting them up, but I guess maybe there's two detractors for me. It's a lot of metallics again, and I just did a ton of metallic painting with the Stormcast. And my opponents too, when I was playing with my KO, I got a lot of feedback hey, this is like playing against a 40K army. And, and I don't I don't want to be that guy at the shop where it's kind of disappointing to, to play against a KO army because you're just getting shot at a thousand times. So I, I'm, I'm debating whether or not that's something I want to do. Uh, the Giants could be fun. I think that'd be a neat hobby project, certainly an expensive one, but, but it could be a lot of fun. So I don't know. If you've got an opinion, certainly throw it in the comments. I'd love to get your take on the whole deal. Um, I will do another video here shortly, uh, probably in the next few days after uh, we do our, our paint glory night. I'll take some more snaps so you guys can see what my uh, fellow competitors have also painted up. And I really appreciate you tuning in. So if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe, like the video. You can hit the bell if you want to follow along. Um, but thanks for joining me on this journey. This has been a lot of fun. I think uh, going forward, I'd like to do some more, not some more, I'd like to start doing some battle reports and then maybe some state of the hobby and some tactics conversations and, and bring in some other guests with me on the show here to kind of talk about Age of Sigmar and what other games uh, that we're playing. So with that, I'll call it an evening and I really appreciate you tuning in. Thanks so much. Take care.